So uh, this study focused on uh, historic masonry is uh, another concept of the study. It's not uh, fully developed, but we managed uh, yesterday in our uh, group uh, to discuss uh, how to go further, how to simplify a little bit, and uh, how to get uh, hopefully a useful uh, case study. I will focus o only on the main uh, topics in this study. So. The idea is to get, get uh, guidance or get some insight how to, in an optimum way, uh, make a survey of uh, masonry, heritage or historic masonry and uh, historic masonry structure. And uh, everyone understands that uh, there are so, uh, so uh, properties of uh, historic uh, masonry materials are so scattered that you need uh, some kind of uh, in-situ survey. Uh, it's very difficult in most cases to um, formulate some prior information without case-specific uh, insights. And we will focus in the case study only on a compressive masonry strength, which is a key uh, material property and typically tensile, uh, tensile strength or um, uh, modulus of elasticity and these parameters are derived uh, from uh, from this uh, property for masonry. And uh, we will uh, try to give uh, specific guidance on, uh, on a survey in terms of a uh, number of destructive tests which are needed and now for this case study let's focus on masonry units only. We will do the same for mortar but uh, for this presentation masonry units only. Uh, we will start uh, as a minimum uh, survey alternative is that we will do only non-destructive tests which will give us uh, some ideas about homogeneity of the material and some insight also about uh, magnitude of uh, strength. But then we will optimize a uh, number of uh, destructive tests so it can be zero, it can be ten or whatever. So. Uh, this is the scope and uh, uh, well if we go on the first uh, hypothesis is that we need at least one destructive test so we will uh, do it and uh, our limit state function for probabilistic analysis will be based on compressive masonry strengths for cases of uh, let's say horizontal uh, horizontal loading or these cases we can derive uh, tensile, uh, tensile properties uh, based on this, uh, on compressive strengths. Uh, we at some uncertainty and at the end uh, our information, our uh, investments into compressive uh, masonry strength can be less useful in cases where, for instance, te tensile properties are needed. But this is for future developments. So for now let's focus on compressive strength we will resistance based on compressive strengths and some geometry. We will have uh, probably dominating uh, permanent loads and some imposed loads or climatic loads. <coughs> and uh, yeah, well, we have uh, two, cons two components, mortar and masonry units. We will focus in the presentation only on masonry units. And uh, uh, Yesterday morning, I, I wanted to avoid uh, pre-posterior analysis in a, let's say, full scale, so have it uh, fully probabilistic and risk, but uh, during the discussion in the group, we decided uh, that uh, we will also, in this case, uh, we will try to do it, let's say, fully probabilistic, so it inevitably means that we need to assume something on fail consequences, uh, I will comment on this a bit later and we need also to assume some reference period for uh, this optimization and if you are talking about uh, some heritage monuments these issues are of course uh, difficult so this is the main uh, main difficulty in this uh, study and then uh, we get it the database where we have uh, for historic materials uh, we have uh, comparison for between non-destructive test results and between destructive test results. So we have two methods, uh, 100 for the first, uh, 80 for 80 pairs of results uh, for the second. And we have uh, generally information on test uncertainty. Uh, so 
you see immediately from this graph on horizontal axis we have compressive strength uh, of the masonry unit obtained by press, so destructive test, and uh, on, a, on a vertical uh, axis we have test uncertainty of non-destructive uh, technique. It's poorly validated, so for, for low, uh, low strengths uh, you get uh, unsafe estimates, for higher strengths uh, you get, you get uh, safe estimates while using non-destructive uh, tests. So, in general, we have uh, probabilistic, uh, we have statistical information to develop our probabilistic models so we can play with that and uh, using uh, varying uh, number of destructive tests uh, used for calibration of non-destructive results, we can quantify the mean in our error. So, of course, for 10 destructive tests, uh, we are touching the correct value. But we can also interpret this in terms of uh, coefficient of variation. So, of course, uh, for <coughs> for let's say one destructive test, we have high scatter in our estimate, and it reduces this reduces uh, later. <coughs> we have the same exercise for mortar, so I will not comment on this. At the end, uh, uh, well, before this meeting, uh, we quantified our uncertainty only in the same. <coughs> <coughs> let's say practical engineering terms so uh, on a horizontal axis uh, horizontal axis is number of destructive tests used for calibration but on vertical axis we have 75% uh, confidence intervals for characteristic uh, for estimate of characteristic compressive strength of masonry so masonry units together with mortar and uh, we see some alternatives here for different material parameters, but I will not comment on it. But basically we see that at the end uh, for 10 destructive tests, our confidence is somewhere between plus minus 10 percent for this confidence interval. Of course, for lower numbers, uh, it's uh, much, uh, much wider. So, uh, well, uh, yesterday we failed uh, to discuss uh, for this case study flow chart, but it was discussed in Dublin. I will not uh, comment uh, much on this. Uh, so <coughs> the ideas we agreed yesterday how to proceed with this study. Well, we accept uh, the idea that at least non-destructive tests are necessary. We will focus on one example, so one church uh, wall which will be exposed to uh <coughs> relatively well now on permanent uh, action and uh, some contribution for climate actions. It means that uh, most uncertainties will be on the resistance side in this case and uh, we will make assumptions on costs of test which is well well uh, Cost of test is uh, easily quantified, but uh, its effect on heritage value can be doubtful, but we will put this question aside. Failure consequences, we will probably make a parametric study to indicate something. So the key issue is how to estimate failure consequences for which reference period. And of course, we have some indications. Uh, we may have some information from insurance, for instance, or at least estimate for the cost of a replica or of, uh, for a rebuilding of the part uh, which can be supposed to damage, uh, uh, which can da be damaged and uh, we can also play with uh, some inverse cost optimization which would reveal us uh, implicitly assumed failure consequences for uh, an accepted target reliability. So these are just indications uh, we did not really uh, <coughs> decide how to proceed. Well, so the limit state function will be very easy. So this is the compressive <laughs> strength of masonry multiplied by some geometric factor and load effect on the other side. Uh, and then we will play this optimization. So uh, for, let's say, no action alternative, so meaning only the non-destructive tests, we will have some uncertainty here in this component, which is relatively influencing uh, or uh, high sensitivity factor. 
and we will reduce our uncertainties by non-destructive by destructive tests we have already probabilistic information available for this and we will check uh, total consequences so in the first case only failure consequences in the second case uh, failure consequences so cf multiplied by pf plus some given test uh, uh, test costs so this is the main and uh, yeah well uh, yeah we formulated some case study brief but uh, yeah we to Marius, to both Marius. so this is 60 second okay. presentation <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. You could also uh, optimize on the number of non-destructive tests. Yeah, but uh, practically this is more or less given by the need to inspect uh, the the whole wall and uh, to verify uh, homogeneity of the material. So this is uh, touching. Uh, yeah, this is. Uh, yeah. But the relationship between the non-destructive tests and your uh, uh, strengths. Uh, yes. So uncertainty in strengths that's estimate. That's a minor comment, but you could uh, try to uh, make the logarithm of both axes. Then you get much uh, more uh, linear uh, uh, form of this uh, dots, but that we can discuss later. It's not okay, that could, uh, that could, but I yeah. would appreciate this. Yeah. Okay, the decision scenario. Uh, so decision scenario is um, easy to do only on the stress test. Or what is the action? Uh, action. Uh, well, uh, action. You mean action once you get uh, once you get the result of uh, of the study. Once no, no, no. We, we need two decisions. We want need one decision whether I should okay. uh, test or not. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then we need this decision on the system. On the should system, I, or whether it's acceptable. Should I demolish the structure or should yeah, I? Yeah. Okay. Here I would be a little bit conservative and just accept uh, what is. It was is not to regrow strengthening or do nothing. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, this I it was yeah. the overlooked a bit. Yeah. Okay, this is also what we need to do. Uh, so, it, sh it should be equal with this one. Yes. Uh, I, I, in it was, this but it was in the first chart. Yeah, it was, so I forgot a yeah. little yeah. bit uh, on the course. Okay, so I will keep this in mind. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah.